If you want your booty and legs to go from looking like this to this, then stick around because I'm gonna walk you through one of my lower body workouts that I have been doing to create this amazing transformation in my legs and glutes, and you can have it too. What's going on, FitFam? Welcome on back to my channel. My name is Megan Janice, the founder of Nomadic Fitness, and I teach you ladies how to eat way more food without any restrictions and work out smarter instead of harder, AKA less, so you can build a beautiful, toned, feminine hourglass body and keep it year round for life with ease. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. And if you're coming on back, thanks so much for joining for another video. Okay, fam. If you want to build a beautifully sculpted lower body where your legs actually have visible definition, where your glutes are nice, full, plump, perky, all of that good stuff, then number one, you definitely need to eat enough. Otherwise you literally are just not going to grow any muscle because that is what gives you that shape and definition on your lower body is having a muscular lower body. And your lower body muscles are very, very, very big muscles. So in order for them to grow, you need to eat a lot. You need to be really, really fueling your body. Now, obviously you don't just do this randomly. You want to do it with some amount of control, some amount of precision, which is going to be tracking your macros. So your protein, fats, and carbs. Okay. So I'm not going to get into that in this video, but if you're not sure how much you should be eating to achieve your body and goals, then make sure to check out this video here because I break it down step-by-step step exactly how to be eating and how to adjust your numbers as you go throughout your fitness journey. Okay. So obviously eating eating enough is so important, not only to actually have enough fuel to build the muscle, but also to have enough energy to train hard, which is the second part of the equation. It is not 80% your diet and only 20% nutrition. It is 50, 50, getting a sculpted body, a toned defined body like this and being able to maintain it year round comes yes from your nutrition, but it also really comes from your training. You cannot build muscle if you are not putting a stimulus on your muscles in order for them to grow. And the stimulus comes from your workouts, not from your nutrition. Now I'm all about working out smarter instead of harder, and you don't need to work out a lot. In fact, you actually shouldn't, you shouldn't be working out so frequently or for so long, but when you do work out, you want to make it count. So that is what I'm going to be explaining to you in this video. So I am taking you through one of my lower body workouts. I lift four days a week. So I do two lower body workouts and two upper body workouts. So so one of my leg days, which is the one I'm going to walk you through today is quads and glutes. So the front of my legs and booty. And then the other leg day is hamstrings and glutes. So back of legs and booty. And I actually have a different set of workout clothes on than what you're going to see in today's workout. And that's because I'm about to go do hamstrings and glutes. So my second leg day of the week, which I'm going to record for Instagram. So make sure to follow me there to get the follow along for that workout. But in this video here on YouTube, I'm going to break down the quads and glutes workout. So I already filmed it the other day. So we're going to be going back and forth between the footage and me talking about what I'm doing in the exercises, what to focus on, how to really make sure you're getting your full bang for your buck so you can build those beautiful legs and booty. Okay. So let's get into it. Okay. So first off, we're just going to do a really quick warm up with my fabric resistance band, which I also call a booty band. So with warm ups, you really don't need to overthink it. I literally just take maybe one or two minutes to quickly activate the muscles that we're going to be targeting. So since this is a lower body workout, I'm just going to put that booty band on and I'm going to do some steps side to side, maybe squat down a little bit. I really just kind of want to get the muscle fibers engaged, get a little bit of blood flowing. And then that way we can get into our actual working sets, our actual lifts. Okay. So getting into the first exercise of today's workout, we are doing some leg extensions with a hold at the top. So this method that we are doing here is called the pre exhaust method. And it's something I've been doing for about a year now. And I am obsessed. I am completely converted because because I used to think that you should do a quick little warm up and then go straight into the biggest, hardest exercises of your workout. So things like your deadlifts, your squats, the most compound exercises, because I thought you want to do the hardest exercises right at the beginning. So you have your full energy for it. But then I learned via my fitness coaches that actually it's more effective to start off your workout with your easier isolation exercise. So in this case, since we're trying to hit quads, starting off with leg extensions, which is a simpler exercise. It's isolating the quads using lighter weight and going for higher reps is actually going to put a really nice stimulus on the muscles, get them really warmed up and ready to go. So that way, by the time we get to our bigger, harder exercises, whether that's hack squats, Bulgarian split squats, whatever, 
That way, when we get to those exercises, the muscles are already gonna be ready to go and we're gonna get way more out of it, way more stimulus on the muscles so that they will grow. So here we go. We are sitting up nice and straight and really simple range of motion. It is not a complicated exercise, but just make sure that we have good muscle mind control. You really want to be lifting up your legs in a nice control motion, not swinging your legs around because anytime you're swinging your body, it means that you are losing the muscle mind connection. So we always wanna make sure we are targeting specifically where we are trying to hit. So lifting your legs up, nice, slow, controlled, and then we are adding in a hold at the top. And let me tell you, this is going to absolutely burn. It is going to kill your quads, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get a seriously nice stimulus on them. So we're gonna go for three sets of about 10 to 12 reps here, nice and controlled, full range of motion, all the things you always wanna be thinking about when it comes to maximally stimulating your muscles for growth. And you're gonna rest about 90 seconds in between your sets here. And then now we are moving on to our first compound exercise, which is hack squats. This is, I think, actually the hardest exercise that there is to do. That and Bulgarian split squats, which is next, but I actually think this one just requires all of your effort. So it is a very, very challenging exercise. I'm not gonna lie, really between my sets, I'm just sitting there being like, why am I doing this? I wanna die but it is so effective. It stimulates the crap out of your muscles. It really, really builds your lower body, so it is absolutely worth it. Now, some people go to gyms that don't have a hack squat, so if that is the case for you, then of course you can just do some kind of regular barbell back squat. However, I honestly really recommend that you try as hard as you can to find a gym that has a hack squat machine because it is just that effective. It is not the same as a regular barbell squat because you're gonna be able to target and directly stimulate and isolate your quads way more with a hack squat, which is gonna build that really sculpted defined leg shape that we wanna have. Okay, so getting into our hack squats, we're gonna be going somewhere between eight to 15 reps, really. And here is something that you wanna think about. With every single exercise that you do, you want to always try to train as close to failure as you possibly can. So you're gonna see in the sets that I did here, I actually ended up decreasing the weight every single set of my hack squats because I ended up feeling like it was too heavy I wasn't able to get as many reps as I would like and I was losing a little bit of the muscle mind connection that I wanted to have So you have to kind of be paying attention to this as you are training and judging this You know kind of think am I really stimulating my muscles as directly as I want to right now? Could I be pushing myself a little bit harder than I am? So hack squat is an exercise you can take all the way to failure because you have a safe setup Meaning you can see here that I actually did fail my second set here I got stuck at the bottom, but that is how you know you are pushing with maximum effort, which means you are giving as much stimulus as you possibly can to really grow your muscles. So try to keep the reps really clean, really tight here. You don't wanna be pausing super long between reps. If that is happening, that means it is too challenging and you should actually go down and wait. You kinda of wanna be moving pretty seamlessly between reps here. So that way we're keeping maximum tension on the muscle. That is what we want, maximum time under tension. That is the most important thing when it comes to building muscle. Okay, so after your hack squats, we are going to move into everyone's lead favorite exercise. Literally all my clients complain about this exercise. I complain about this exercise, but it is so effective and that is Bulgarian split squats. So there's slightly different ways you can do this exercise. You can do it with your torso leaning more forward, which is going to hit the back of your legs a little bit more, a little bit more glutes and hamstrings versus the way that I'm doing it here where my torso is upright means we're going to be hitting more the quads, which makes sense because this is a quad and glute day. So we are also going to be doing a slow eccentric, meaning we are going to be descending for three full seconds. So this is another way that you can really maximize time under tension on the muscle is simply slowing down. Making your descent into the movement slower, more nice, slow, controlled reps is gonna obviously create more time under tension. So it's not always just about going so heavy. Sometimes it's just about how can you create more tension with what you're already doing. Slowing down your reps or adding a pause, a hold, like we did in the leg extensions is a great example of that. So we are gonna be doing eight to 10 reps per leg for this exercise. And just a little pro tip, because this is such a challenging exercise and requires a lot of effort, I'm always just like absolutely dying, absolutely drenched in sweat by the end of these. You can rest between each leg. So you don't need to go from one leg right to the other. I usually rest about 60 to 90 seconds between legs and then I 
rest a good like two to three minutes in between a full set because it is just that demanding. So another thing with these, a mistake I often see is people coming way too far forward from the bench. You can see that I'm keeping my body nice and close to the bench. That is what you want to do. Don't come so far forward. You should be able to bring the elevated legs knee all the way down to the ground. You want to get that full range of motion, get the knee all the way down and then push up through the front heel to lift yourself back up and keep your reps nice and smooth. Don't be pausing super long between reps. If that's happening again, that means it's too heavy and you actually should go down and wait so we can maximize time under tension. Okay. So definitely those were the two hardest exercises of this workout. I'm not going to lie. This is a very, very challenging workout. Okay. It's only once per week that I have to do this difficult of a workout, but I definitely have to amp myself up for it every single week because I'm like, damn, it's so, so challenging, but it is worth it. That is how we get these amazing sculpted legs and glutes. Of course, also with eating enough. If you don't eat enough, it won't happen. So make sure to be doing that. And now we are getting on to the glute exercise of today's workout or one of the main ones. And that is one and one quarter hip thrusts. Okay. So really important with your hip thrusts is your setup. When it comes to hip thrusting, your setup is everything. You don't want to have a bench that is too high. The edge of the bench should be right across the middle of your shoulder blades or even a little bit lower than that. So if it is coming up at the top of your shoulder blades or almost at your shoulders, that is way too high. And most regular weightlifting benches in a gym are too high. So you have to experiment a little bit. You have to set up sometimes those little Pilates step up blocks or here in my gym in Mexico, I do it on the bench press because the bench press height of the bench is actually the perfect amount for me. So maybe see in your gym what you have to work with. When I was living in Barcelona, I used to take the Pilates step up bench things and then just stack them appropriately until I got the right height where it wasn't too low, but it wasn't too high. So you want to be able to come up into that hip thrust. And when you are at a full hip extension, your chin will be tucked with your eyes looking straight ahead at the wall and your abs, knees, and chest should all be in one straight line. If that is not the case, then you need to change the positioning of your hip thrust. So it is a little bit of effort to set up for this exercise, but trust me, it is so worth it because when you nail this exercise, you're going to get glutes on glutes. Let me tell you. Okay. So since this is one and one quarter, it means that we are coming up to one full rep, full hip extension at the top, complete full glute lockout. And then we are descending into a partial rep and then we go back down to the bottom. So one full repetition is one and a quarter. So let me tell you, these absolutely destroy your glutes. You can see, I only have 145 on each side, which maybe if you're a little bit more of a beginner, that's going to still feel like a lot of weight, but a lot of more experienced girls in the gym are hip thrusting way heavier than that. And honestly, I think that that is a mistake for an exercise like this. You have so much time under tension because of the extra one quarter rep that you really don't actually need that much weight. It is more about controlling the weight that you lift and really maximizing the stimulus on the glutes and making sure that you are lifting from the glutes. You want the tension to be on the glutes, not in your legs, because then you're going to be missing the point of this exercise, which is to have muscle mind connection on the glutes. Okay. So you want to go for somewhere between 10 to 15 reps here. Of course, go as far as you can all the way to failure, but you should be absolutely dying by the end of this. And I challenge you, you know, you're going to hit that point where you want to be done the set because you're going to think like, oh my God, my glutes are on fire. Go past that. Keep going, keep going, keep going, push harder and just go all the way until you literally cannot do it anymore. And trust me, you will love it because afterwards your glutes are going to have an amazing pump. Okay. So now we are finally done with all the super hard exercises of this workout. And we are just going to finish off with a final two sets of cable kickbacks. So we are doing a glute medius kickback, which means we are kicking out at a 30 degree angle. So of course you're going to want to put the cable at the lowest setting on the cable machine, get your ankle strap, and then you're going to be leaning forward torso parallel to the ground more or less, and then kicking straight back and up. And again, having your leg at about a 30 degree angle. So this is going to hit your glutes slightly differently than if you were kicking straight back. So I love this variation. Really important. You don't want to use too much weight, of course, because if it's too heavy, then you're not really going to be able to have as much of a full range of motion kicking up all the way. And you're also not going to be having as good muscle mind connection on the glutes, which defeats the whole purpose because we're trying to stimulate our booty here so that it will grow. So you're going to do somewhere between 15 to 20 reps. Again, go all the way, push yourself to the maximum. And we're just doing two sets here because we've already done so much volume, meaning so many exercises, so many sets and reps in this workout already. You don't really need to do three sets here. All right, fam. So that is 
is my quad and glute day. It is a killer, I'm not gonna lie. If you give this a try, you're gonna see that it is very challenging, but it is extremely effective. And it is not necessarily that it takes so much time, but while you are in the workout itself, it is taking your full effort, your full focus and attention, and that is the way your training should be. Your training is your moment to shine. It is the moment to really beat up your muscles. And then that's why outside of the gym, you rest, you don't overtrain, you eat plenty of food so you can actually recover your muscles and that way they actually grow. And you end up getting this banging hourglass body that you can maintain year round for life with ease. All right, fam, thank you so much for checking out this video. Now, if you wanna see some more booty and leg workouts, I suggest you go watch this video next where I'm gonna walk you through one of my other leg workouts. So I will see you in that one.